Hello. 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 Hi, everybody. Hi, hi. Welcome to Curiosity Cove. My name is Veda. And I'm your trusty cat. I'm speaking. And today we'll be talking about. Darkin! Darkin! Uh, I'm kind of excited. Me too. I This is like a piece of League lore that I feel like I know, well, I knew so little about. Mm. Uh, and so learning about it has been super fun. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and then as you guys know, we do usually have Chalky with us. Um, if she's able to join, it will probably be later in the episode because she's tied up right now. Um, but you should still be seeing her around. Uh, mm -hmm, for sure. Other than that, another t tiny little update that I was actually just informing Kathy about. Um, mm -hmm. I use an editing system that automatically uploads to Spotify and YouTube for episodes. That yeah. has not been happening for the last two weeks. So all of those episodes will be available tomorrow pending my bandwidth and ability to upload them. So <laughs> in the next couple days, look for those if you need to catch up on episodes or anything. And then if not, that's cool. At least you guys are here to see them live. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Other than that, uh, how are you? How was work? Um, It was pretty good. It was, Um, I thought it was going to be a really busy day, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah. But it wasn't too bad today. And we got out a little bit early. Um, oh, okay. I got myself some ice cream on my way home. Wait, love that for Anime you. tacos. <gasps> I love that the for you. I'm so excited. We didn't I was actually been craving tacos for the past like four days. It's been horrible. Anytime like I would mention it, shot down as a dinner idea. Or like oh. we would I'd have it in my mind, I'm like, yes, we're gonna finally have it. Doesn't happen. And then someone would be like, damn, I had some tacos the other day. And I'd be like, I could have been having tacos <laughs> the other day. It's it funny that so you mentioned I had street tacos had last tacos. night. Well, I'm glad you didn't mention anything because I would have been sad. But yeah. it also would have fueled my flame to making them today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what kind of tacos were they? Did you do like beef, chicken, pork? Um, I do ground turkey. Ooh, I've never yeah, it's had... a bit more on the leaner side. Yeah. So it just I don't know, it just sits a little bit better for me. Yeah. I tell me it gets a little upset. <laughs> yeah, I get you, I get you, I get you. Yeah, I had Jeez. mine were like rotisserie chicken and oh. um basically just cheese lettuce and then I have a cilantro avocado lime sauce Ooh. that goes on them. yeah it's yeah. not it's not me it's from costco but i mean like it's okay, good but like own it you know no for yeah there's there's a special love that i have for the street tacos from costco and i learned that they don't happen everywhere huh. so i feel really fortunate to be in a location in which they have them <laughs> yeah that's you. how um, was your day honestly my day was really good i got into work and my boss was like, I have something else for you to do. That's not what you've been doing, which which is great because the task that I've had the last couple of weeks is driving me up a wall. Um, oh, no. Yeah. Well, I'm reorganizing the entire filing network online. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. so having to figure out a new system that works for everybody while everybody is still using the old system and yeah. figuring out how to like roll that out effectively has been just like so aggravating. So he was like, yeah, I just like I need you to go around the department and kind of get job descriptions and like duties and everything nailed down for everyone so we can make sure that everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And I was like, oh, okay. I am on it. Uh, That's and then not he that was bad. like, no, it's not. It's actually really fun. And then he was yeah. like, by the way, we got carnitas for breakfast. So there's carnitas in the break room. And I uh -huh. ate the shit out of those carnitas. They were so freaking good. Um, <laughs> and then I got to see Abby. Uh, she like oh, what a ran to me twice. And it's so cute to watch her little like wiggly butt. She's like, she is 33 pounds now. Mm -hmm. And she was seven pounds like, I don't know, three or four weeks ago. So it's just mm -hmm. crazy to me because I used to, she used to like jump into my arms and I'd pick her up and I'd be like, you're a sweet little baby. And now she's so heavy. I'm like, oh God, Abby. <laughs> now she's a little chonk. <laughs> she is. Oh, she's baby. so cute though. I love having an office puppy is like the best ever. Like, <laughs> like having a puppy that just runs into my office every once in a while. That is like, the, it's the greatest thing. And if she gets That's bigger, amazing. I'm really excited because she'll get to like, I mean, she's a, she's a golden so she's like mm -hmm. gonna be super smart and have all these tricks and stuff um maybe so i'm <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah she knows how to sit already so that's a cute one 
Uh, and if I, for some reason, if I pat my legs to try to get her to jump, she just rolls onto her back instead. So I don't really know what that is, but yeah, I don't, I think it, I think I might've accidentally conditioned her if we're being honest. Her yeah, I think I might've accidentally Pavloved her. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we love, we love our little mascot and she's, yeah, she's been great. Babe. Um, but yeah, overall, I can't say it was bad. I got hit with the sads on the way home for some weird reason so i'm kind of like sitting in the sads now but well, hopefully i'll just sleep that off and we'll be good we'll be good yeah, tomorrow you'll be fine yeah a good old nap will help yeah yeah, yeah. um excellent okay do you have any words with the do uh, i was just about to ask if you had any cap words <laughs> so my dumbass did oh but as I preface that with my dumbass did, I um, didn't Forgot write it. it down. Nice. And I'm normally really good at like having things around me to like write stuff down because I've been forget so forgetful recently. Oh, and uh, I didn't. Um, it wasn't that interesting of a conversation though. Um, so hopefully I'll remember it. Maybe I'll remember it during this podcast. Yeah, like, maybe it'll pop up. Word. <laughs> yeah, do your bling. <laughs> um. True. <laughs> uh okay cool well today's word with vadu uh i tried to find something that would kind of like relate to darken but i couldn't really like any words that relate to them would probably be made up or like words that everyone knows because they're very much like corruption and yeah quote unquote evil and whatever mm -hmm. so um i went with the word pernicious do you know what this means pernicious yeah pernicious it sounds bad. It's it like is a, a little negative. Um, it uh -huh. it means having a harmful effect, especially in a gradual or subtle way. Uh, mm. So, like, the example they gave was the pernicious effects of air pollution. So it's, like, mm. a gradual negative effect. And I just figured mm. maybe it would relate to, like, the corruption of the dark end. Because, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll go over it. But it was very, you know, the void was had a very pernicious effect on the Shremans. So mm -hmm. that was my my way of relating it. But yeah, if you know any anything out there or anybody who has maybe a pernicious effect, just being mm. super harmful in a mm -hmm. in a subtle way. In a subtle way. In a subtle. Low I think key, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna start using this word. That's a very for. It's a very like appealing word to me for some reason. Like pernicious. It sounds fancy. So it does if you sound do fancy. It, you're gonna sound fancy. Too. I know. I'm gonna sound so smart, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so smart or whatever. <laughs> and I, I was like, it was funny because I was thinking about how um, vitriolic was like our word a few weeks ago, and yeah. I was like, damn, I can use vitriolic. I can use like pernicious to talk about people who are being negative or whatever. This is true. I got and some scrum some lemons. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great callback <laughs> i love that word so much dude scrumping is so amazing. funny to me i just the the entire existence of the concept is hysterical <laughs> yeah i was over there like scrumping this guy's oranges and i was overhearing a conversation <laughs> it's so dumb <laughs> it's literally the dumbest word i love it but it's, even if you're just saying it's so like um on the casual it sounds so stupid <laughs> so, you know those um signs that people have that say gone fishing yeah i'm gonna have gone one that scrumping. says gone scrumping <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible <laughs> now you have to oh dude it's gonna be hung right above my door like it's it's gonna be like a flip around sign and it's gonna say we're home and then gone scrumping <laughs> not scrumping scrumping scrump yeah that scrumping little, like, apostrophe. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely it's amazing i cannot wait oh my god okay well you guys today's topic that we're going over like we said before is darken mm -hmm. and i think how we're gonna do this because usually we kind of split things up beforehand but this time we both kind of just did research so yeah. i think uh ultimately we, what we decided is Cap is going to go ahead and go over the Darken stuff that she researched because it does mm. kind of fall along the original lore. I'm going to go over the Legend of Runeterra stuff afterwards because they expanded on it and they kind of retconned a little bit of it. Um, mm -hmm. So essentially, we're going to we're going to let you have the floor first. So hit us. Of course, of course. 
So with what I researched, um, I knew absolutely nothing. Honestly, I probably could have guessed some of the um, Darkened characters. Mm -hmm. um, and that's about it. But the basic stuff that I found is like, what would be defined as a Darken, some of the Darken champs, and how physiolog physiologically they came to be. I hate that um, word. And then I also have some uh, cute little fun facts. And um, Darkens are all represented by, um, what's it called? A vessel. And then they're sealed or bound to a weapon. So I do have the Darken uh, champs and their quote unquote vessels if they do have one or weapons that they're tied to um and so we're gonna go ahead and jump on in it here we go so basically what a darken is is they are corrupted godlike warriors who were traumatized by the horror of the void war which was um self-inflicted by blood magic so the void war wasn't the like self-inflicted part but basically um in order to win this war or have like the one up kind of thing on the void they kind of went a little bonkers um the whole beginning of this started with the death of azir and the fall of shirima which was the catalyst for um having the darkened who were just ascended beings and like the godlike warriors like they're kind of like the saviors of shirima the very big protectors um, they then had this big falling out after Azir and Sharima, which was their home, fell apart. And so basically they turned their back on the Sharimans and kind of went a little bonkers. Um, and there are like the big Darken champs um, that we know of like in the game and stuff, but there were some lesser known as well. Um, honestly, I wish Riot went into this a little bit more because as I was doing research on this stuff, there is so many cool ones. I didn't get the chance to write them all down because honestly, we could be talking about this forever. Mm -hmm. So I just wrote down a few and like one of the newer ones or like ones that like they haven't made into a champ yet. They really should because she's super interesting. She's if super it's cool. the one that I think she is, um, she was like the forefront of the Legend of Runeterra cards. I think they yeah, put her yeah, yeah. In, yeah, they put yeah. her in Legends of Runeterra. A lot of the time they do that with champs. They'll put them in like TFT or Legends of Runeterra rather than making like a whole character with a kit. But I would also yeah. love to see her on the Rift. Oh, like I think it so would be so sick. fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we'll let you guys in on it a little bit later. But for now, tune in. But so the Darkened champs that are a part of League is Aatrox, Nefiri, Rost, which is um, a part of Kane. And then there's Varys, who is a uh, mixture of Kai and Valmar, which are um, the two souls that are trapped in one. Um, and so basically the Darken would use their knowledge of blood magic to augment their flesh and weapons until they became really unrecognizable. That's why they kind of have like that demon-esque look with them, um, even though they were once noble warriors of Shirima. Um, and so to jump into how this all became... Um, the Darken. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start from um, who the Darken were before they became actual Darken. What happened with um, Shirima, and then what did the blood magic do, and then where the downfall happened up until they got their vessel and their weapons. And a good so, um, pri like a good uh, prefacing note is yeah. that these Shuriman godlike warriors, the way that they're formed is the giant sun disk that Shurima has in the middle of their city yeah. essentially can reflect celestial magic. And Ooh. so all of their all of their abilities and their powers and the reason actually that they are, you know, they take the form of animals is because that celestial magic that is reflected into one of these champions uh, mm -hmm. basically that's the ascension is they're taking this like godlike form mm -hmm. and and so that that's why like nasus looks like a dog and why yeah. renekton looks like an alligator um and something that i learned that's really cool is that apparently it's theorized that a lot of the animals that they're taking shapes of are actually the like forms of celestial gods and like that that the gods created these animals that kind of portray their aspects or like, like their traits. 
So like like the the like game version of gods or they're t- taking it from like real life stuff the game version so i guess the the way that it is is kind of like if you think of these because they're all called aspects right rather than like gods so -hmm. all of these aspects are in the form of an animal so when they were creating rune terra or ever however they may have come across this um they made animals that took their own form so it's like their way of basically saying like, no, 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 this isn't, they're taking the form of like some random animal. Animals mm-hmm. took the form of aspects. And so they're reflecting whatever animal that aspect is actually the form of. Oh, that's yeah. kind of cool though. It is. It was a really cool like little thing that I learned. It is. I don't think it's a hundred percent confirmed, but I mm-hmm. think that's like a high speculation amongst people because of like some hints that are given in the lore yeah oh that's kind of cool mm-hmm. i like that me too but, like the one thing i have a question about that though is like i could see it in like the shurimans that like are now mm-hmm. like you said nazis and like renekton in them but you don't really see it in the darken though so there's a reason for that uh uh-huh. which i have in my research so gotcha. i was gonna say we'll i can later yeah i can yeah. go over that in a little bit Okay, cool. Because I'm actually super curious. Because I know, like, they had, like, the blood magic that went going on. But they didn't really have any of that, like, quote-unquote aspect left. Yeah. So I was then wondering girl if, like, there's a previous that you want to see on the on the rift, she's a big yeah. part of all that, actually. Oh, okay. So cool, cool, cool. I'll, I'll do you a learned in a little bit. <laughs> I'll do you a learned. All right. Bet, bet, bet. So before we get even more of the in-depth learning, we're going to do some basic surface level, surface level stuff. So basically, the Darken began as a revered human warrior of the ancient Shurima, who ascended into serving against the threat of the Void. That was this whole big Void War, which then was relabeled as the Great Darken War. Um, so after they halted the Void, the surviving ascended called themselves the quote-unquote Sunborn. But the Sunborn would soon feel lost without their ruler, because this was post-losing Azir, which was the fall of Shurima. So now the Sunborn, which was also like a homage to like the sun disc of Shirima, um, they're born of the sun, which is I thought was super cool. They kind of felt that they didn't really have a purpose and they kind of grew lost. They would wander around Shirima. They didn't really like know what they really should be doing because they not that they were created for the war, but kind of. Yeah. So if they didn't really have a war or a battle to fight, they were just lost warriors, and unfortunately, their mental started to eat away, and they kind of lost themselves. So, because of this, they started the War of the Sunborn, or the um, Great Darken War. And so, the Darkens would use um, blood magic to make their weapons and armor that they wore... Um, not specifically, I don't think this was on purpose, I think it was kind of like a oops, I guess this is now part of me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But they were just using blood magic to make their weapons and armor stronger. But unfortunately, with blood magic, that kind of ties it to the person that's doing the wielding. So this gave them a more demonic appearance. So if you have taken a look at Aatrox or um, when Kane turns into Rost, like there's a really big um, change in the two characters. Um, And so... They would have all this magic happen and they would get like lost souls and they would just honestly go on a rampage. They would terrorize anybody they came across. They would feel um, compelled to like go do something. And unfortunately that doing something would end up like causing massacres, going against um, uh, people who would try to oppose them and stuff like that because they felt that they still had that power to do things for the people even though they weren't really doing it for the people they're kind of ending up doing it for themselves but not in the right kind of way and so um for the moment um they were just going on a rampage and unfortunately um that happened i don't know the time frame like how long they did this for before they got sealed but eventually um Towards the end of the Darken War, the Darkens were all trapped and sealed within their weapons that they used and used blood magic to tie them to. So, 
Um, they're all sealed and locked away. Um, but if there were some people who found the weapons of a previously sealed Darken, um, that person who like would pick up and wield that weapon would be what's called a vessel. And there would be a slight possibility of freedom for the Darken who is trapped inside to then um, act through the vessel. And they kind of explained it in a way as um, when the vessel was wielding the weapon that the Darken would like whisper to them or like flood their memories with um, images of the past. Um, images of what they did, their horrible backstory, or, like, try to get them to do things, but it never was full control. They only had little, like, moments of opportunity, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, from the moment a darkened weapon chooses a vessel, because it's not like just anybody can wield them, they kind of explained it as um, if the host vessel the one that was quote unquote chosen um they had like a a battery life percentage is how i would give a good explanation of it where there were perfect matches to where the vessel would have a good give and take with um the darken that's in the weapon but then there would be ones where they would find the weapon and like only want to use it for like no good or anything right. like that and their battery percentage would be just about it like they would go from 100 percent, and then over time the body would weaken they wouldn't mm. be able to sustain the power that's belonging to the weapon and unfortunately that vessel would then die and then the weapon would have to wait along until the next person would show up um or if they got resealed somewhere else they would have to just wait until maybe a soul would come across them and so yeah. um that power that i was talking about before was so unmanageable to some vessels that um they even said that it might take more than just one person to wield it mm -hmm. which i thought was super interesting when they're talking about atrox's story because i found out and i didn't know this um atrox isn't just one person like atrox is an amalgam which is big word for cap hold on is just a big bundle of like multiple hosts yeah. and vessels and i thought that was so i thought it was one person the whole time i um, didn't know he was multiple people like all together and in fact atrox doesn't just speak through the vessels he actually like usurped all of their minds and he controls like himself yeah now. atrox is like that bitch when it comes he to the is. Darken. He, he is. Um, he's responsible. I'll go more into it. Uh, but mm -hmm. he's, because I have everybody's, like, I have a little bit of backstory on everyone, uh, yeah. including your girl. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, Aatrox is basically responsible for, like, two huge fights in which, because mm -hmm. he's, all of the Darken kind of have something that they represent, and his is war. And so... Yeah. He's got like this amalgamation, which is that word, <laughs> of um, <laughs> of all of these like people that he's manipulated through these yeah. wars that he's essentially started. Mm -hmm. Which I find super interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to get more into his backstory one time. Like, even just if it's not for the podcast, I just want to research it because oh, he sounds yeah. super interesting. Um, but basically, he kind of seems like the big hotshot Darkin that kind of like. Not began at all, but is the main focus of it all because mm -hmm. of just the amount of power he has and how much influence he has on everything else. Mm -hmm. But in summary, with all that, um, what you can see a Darken is is kind of like a parasitic relationship with its vessel. So, yes, are there perfect matches where they can sustain each other long enough that they end up living in coexistence even though they're still kind of like doing a give and take kind of thing. Um, but mostly if it is not that you're mostly going to die if you use one of these weapons, essentially. So 
I went through and I picked um, just the Darken that we know of. Um, I know in my website that I was using, there was a whole bunch of other ones that I thought were super interesting, um, but I had no idea what they were, mm-hmm. like who, where they were from. I know it's probably just lore-based stuff, um, but here is the um, most well-known notable Darken and then that lovely lady we keep talking about. So, coming in at the top, um, we got Aatrox, and as you know, his weapon is his sword, and he was sealed somewhere in the Freljord. Um, They didn't say where, but um, I would say, based on where the, like, void happened, like, if we're talking, like, Howling Abyss area, Mm -hmm. I kind of feel it's somewhere around there, because that would just make the most sense to me. Like, why not have him sealed somewhere where it all began kind of thing Mm -hmm. i just think that would be kind of cool right and as we said his vessel was um just a bunch of different vessels all in one and he kind of took over that um but he was sealed away um and then we got nefiri and their weapon is a dagger and they are sealed somewhere in a temple in Sharima. they didn't say which temple specifically but again i think it would be kind of interesting that it would be in like the main sun disc temple because i think that would be really cool Mm -hmm. um and then their vessel is actually a pack of shiriman dune hounds which i thought was really cool and i just love nefiri's character and Mm -hmm. like how um they came to be and like how cool you they know look too. their story is actually way cooler than i think people were like oh this is kind of fucking stupid when when her lore came out mm. i when you look at darken as a whole and then read her story it's fucking cool oh i'm excited yeah um so next one i got rost it's not kane specifically um because kane is actually the vessel slash not the vessel so it is actually the weapon is his scythe which is um his main weapon in league um and he is sealed in a place called vinder noxus um but it's said that kane's not the actual vessel it seems that the vessel itself is the scythe like Mm -hmm. that kane doesn't actually have rost in him it's kind of like rost takes over Mm-hmm. here and there but it's not like a like an atrox kind of thing where the weapon itself caused the vessel to like could be completely taken over it's just kind of like he's here and then not and then sometimes and then not. if we're being it's really completely weird. honest hmm. if we're being completely candid about it uh yeah. the rost cane thing is fucking stupid and i'll get into it later but it's fucking dumb (laughs) yeah we were having a quick little chat about everything beforehand and what veda mentioned about ross and kane kind of got me a little pissed but we'll go (laughs) ahead and talk about that later i'm just doing basic stuff and then veda's gonna rip that bitch to shreds if it's canon or not you're gonna know about it i'm just gonna let you know Um, but next we got Varys, and Varys' weapon is a bow, and he's actually sealed in, um, don't mind if I butcher any of these names, by the way, I'm so sorry. He's um, sealed in an Aluxan cage in Palace Ionia, and he is a vessel of both Kai and Valmar's bodies. And then this lovely lady we keep talking about, I believe her name is Jolani? Zolani, yeah. Zolani. Mm-hmm. Um, and their weapon is actually, um, I don't... I didn't have a specification. I have two listed. Um, one was labeled blood letters, and the other was a chain sickle. And I just thought that was so funny. They're the sick. they're the same thing. The chain sickle, like the two combos of it, they're called. Yeah. They're like curved blades. They're called the blood letters, but it's See, just like the name. How do we not them. have a champ like that? I honestly, the weapons so sick. Like, so why cool. would you say that? Like, why would you say that there's a champ like this and then not give us it? Not put her on the riff. I want to yeah. see Zolani fucking people up on the rift so bad. I really do. I want to know what her, like, where she would be placed on the rift. What, oh, like, I have ideas. Her actual backstory. Oh, Maybe that's what we do at the end is we, like, create this champ. <laughs> and then we send it to Ryan. Yeah, Got and then you. we send Heard it to Ryan. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and basically for Zolani, um, her vessel is actually a pupil of the Wuju order under Master Yi, and his name was June. It seems like that i don't know for sure but i'm pretty sure she took over his body like i don't think june's there anymore uh correct uh june 
Jun was um the star pupil of the Wuju order and yeah. um she essentially I'll I'll get into it a little more but she essentially as a last ditch effort let Zolani take her over. Yeah. And that was really sad cuz mm-hmm. I was like that's under Master Yi, oh, just so wait. You, know, you can only understand like how much that impacts his story, too. Oh, just wait. I have... <laughs> so, I did a little section on Yi because it's fucking depressing. Yeah. It's really fucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want me to go over some of the fun facts now or wait until after? Uh, you want to do fun facts at the end? Yeah, for sure. Okay. I'll keep on to them. Cool. Because that so way... Let's get into the nitty gritty. I was going to say, Obviously. that way, if, if any of your fun facts are spilled during my extensive stuff, then you can... Oh, yeah. yeah. Just gloss over them. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So everything that I have comes from essentially a combination of the 2018 lore in which we were only aware of three Darken in its, mm-hmm. in their names. And then from what we knew at that point, only five were remaining from all the Darken that once existed. Yeah. Back in 2023, there was an expansion on Legends of Runeterra, which, if you guys don't know, is Riot's card game, uh, Mm. League of Legends card game, because they have to have League in 85 formats. Of course, Um, of course. So all of my lore basically comes from partially that old uh, piece, because a lot of things were basically like rewritten, expanded upon, retconned, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, this this new expansive where we get more information on Zolani and how the Darkens became what they are and how they're sealed away and everything. So mm-hmm. to expand upon that, basically everything about the Shuriman's, how they ascend, like how the Darkens were uh, driven crazy by the Void, all of that is still correct. We got a little bit of expansion on why they fought the Void. And basically mm-hmm. what it is, is Icathians uh, were inhibiting like this this small little area, I think south of Shurima. And mm-hmm. as Shurima was ascending more of their golden warriors and uh, becoming a stronger force, they wanted to expand their city. So they marched to Icathia's doorstep and were like, we're going to take you guys over. And they're like, no, you're not. So it started a war between the two. During this oh war, Shurima was kicking their asses. I mean, like, <laughs> they, it, they were they were doing some crazy shit. And when it looked like all hope was lost, they basically, Icathians basically said, we have one last chance mm-hmm. if we release the void. And so it was a last ditch effort by them to try to turn things around. They did not realize the repercussions that they were going to have to face and they just let the void go on these Shuriman's. So oh basically very few survived uh, and it was a big, big old bloodshed. And the only thing that was really keeping them together was that they were being led by Azir. Like we said before, once he was betrayed uh, by Zareth and Shurima started to fall they were left to kind of just their broken mental states just got worse and worse. They were kind of just left to to dwell in it. Yeah. And essentially in this there was that blood magic that they were using to... Uh, the way that it was put in Legends of Terra is that the blood magic was essentially a way for them to modify their bodies to become stronger. So it did sound like it was intentional. The, you know, forging armor directly onto themselves or like yeah modifying their body yeah and it was something that was actually offered by zolani so oh. zolani's origin actually dates way way back to like our original learning of darkens was mm-hmm. th- quote unquote our and by that i mean runeterra uh yeah. Ezreal had found a whole bunch of different artifacts that kind of depicted Darkens. I mean, anything from, like, you know, blades with carvings in them to pottery to tablets to just anything that you could imagine. Books and and all the stuff from all over Runeterra, all the continents. And all of it was depicting, you know, these characters. And Zolani was one of them, but her face was etched out because it came from 
a huge carving in stone that somebody oh. had essentially destroyed the face of. And mm -hmm. it was said that the cruelest of Darkin had taken out the face of the statue due to an overwhelming hate for yeah. the Darkin depicted. Um, oh. Just about every Darkin hates her. <laughs> oh, um, what and the fuck? It's, it's, I mean, with good reason. Uh, but yeah. before we get to that, a little more background knowledge. The celestial gods started to kind of catch wind of this Darken war that was forming. Because essentially with all of these modifications they were doing with this blood magic, they were trying to be the strongest Darken. So they didn't only turn their backs on Runeterra, but they turned their backs on each other as well. And they were all just trying to essentially assert dominance. So this great dark in a world that's the great dark in war that spread across the world was essentially mm -hmm. a big like cockfight, like whose dick is biggest. It I like it. It's really simple. They were just trying to prove that they were like the number one dark in. There was really nothing else to it. They were driven mad, driven blood hungry. Like that's all it was. Mm -hmm. When this started to happen. The celestial gods were like, okay, wait, we cannot have this. This is a threat to all of the living creatures down in Runeterra. Mm -hmm. We have to do something. So in steps Maisha, who you guys would know as Zoe, the aspect of Twilight. She was sent mm -hmm. down to essentially seal all of these Darken away. So she took what is called... Oh god, it's Sivir's weapon and it's called the the Chaligar? 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 Something like that. But her little mm -hmm. disc that she has that she throws back and forth, that yeah. actually has most of the Darken that survived the Void War and the Darken War sealed into it. So, those who were not sealed in there, so you're talking Aatrox, Nefiri, Zolani, all of them, mm -hmm. they were essentially the ones who were able to escape. And so, when people would come across them essentially there was this way that that was well known amongst people of how to seal away a darken in a weapon mm -hmm. but they were human crafted versus the aspect crafted caligar chaligar whatever it's called huh. uh, yeah. so all of those that were sealed separately were sealed in handcrafted by human weapons um so, flash forward to Master Yi and his Wuju Order. Essentially, there was a keeper of a box, right? And this keeper of the box was kind of like the all-knowing, like, Darken. This is how people knew how to seal Darken away, how they were keeping track of them. Essentially, this, this doesn't have a lot of description behind it besides some dude with a box knows everything about Darken. That's all I got. I have n I cannot find anything to expand upon it. Apparently it was a comic. I couldn't find the comic. But he's just the all-knowing guy. Right, yeah. He's, he's like guy. he's Pinhead and this box is his box, you know? I was going to um, make the comparison <laughs> too. You opened it. I came. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he has this box. He's all knowing. And he's like, there's another Darken weapon out there. In Ionia somewhere, there's another Darken weapon. And everyone's like, the fuck? Well, he has it. So oh. he has a temple where he's keeping this blade, right? And it is heavily guarded. And I, I want to preface this with... After researching this, I just think that Master Yi is a bad leader. Uh, why? I, because the first time that he had an order or a school where he taught people, they were massacred. <laughs> and and then he started a new order, which is the Wuju order, and they were massacred. So I'm just, I just don't know that I would trust Master Yi. I just don't know that I, I would want to be his pupil. If I would say it's I, okay for I him to do this again. I don't think that he should be creating a third order is all I'm saying. <laughs> um, but the first one is completely unrelated to the Darken. The second uh, Wuju order that he had was essentially um, he was teaching a whole bunch of uh, pupils how to be blade masters. June that we talked about earlier 
was mm-hmm. among those pupils and she was actually his star pupil. So Ooh. numero uno blade master studied direct, directly under Yi. Everything was going fine. Uh, and then essentially what happened was Kane and Rost got wind of this darkened weapon and they both wanted it for different reasons. Rost was hoping that by getting the blood letters um, that were being hit away because this weapon ultimately led to Zolani. Um, Mm -hmm. He was hoping that by getting the blood letters, he would finally have the ability to completely take over a vessel and he would not be stuck coexisting with Kane. Kane was hoping that by obtaining these, he would have some sort of backup to essentially consume and be able to use the darkened power without actually becoming a darkened vessel so Mm. they both wanted it but for very different reasons it doesn't actually state too much about whether or not one of them or the other was like the seed planter for hey we should go after this i think when they caught wind of it they just both had separate ideas and kind of like were they were just gonna fight it out when they got there you know yeah kind of thing Mm -hmm. so uh to give a little background on kane and his essentially like involvement in everything uh kane was actually one of the children that was dropped onto the beaches of ionia and just told to go fight noxus did this really fucked up thing oh Um, as soon as you said noxus i was like oh gotcha oh yeah yeah it was it was really fucked up mostly everything that noxus does is fucked up pretty fucked up but (laughs) um but uh essentially the uh beaches of ionia he was put out there as a child warrior and he kind of just like learned how to live and survive on his own like just make his way the best that he could given the shitty ass situation that he was put in Mm-hmm. I do believe he essentially like stumbled upon Zed uh, and Zed had had this whole shadow order going this like shadow technique order if you will mm-hmm. and uh, there's like a whole story there too honestly it'd be really cool to go over like all of the different kind of ninja orders happening on Ionia at some point because yeah. the whole thing between like Yi, Shen, Zed, like all of that is crazy to me. Like their stories, because mm-hmm. like there's like partial blame put on them for like the release of uh, Nocturne, or like the reason that they exist is because of Nocturne, because it has something to do with like shadow magic or shadow technique. Yeah. And then also there's like this whole thing about how. There are different champs who are part of these shadows, like a Kali's part of one of the orders. I want to say it's also under Zed, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but there's a lot of champs who are involved in that, and I just feel like there's a lot of connecting stories within Ionia that would be really cool to cover. Um, but Kane was one of Zed's students, and essentially what happened was um, Zed was ordered to investigate the battle scene from the beaches and mm-hmm. Kane was like like battered in the mud like a Very child is, exactly and so Zed was like well I could kill him or I could make him a warrior so that's exactly what he did he decided to train him so then he quickly became the greatest trainee in the order um, but he was also super like obnoxious and arrogant and conceited so he was mm-hmm. sent on this mission to retrieve Rost's scythe from Noxus, his former home. Mm-hmm. When he found it, Rost essentially was like speaking to him. And instead of destroying it like he was supposed to, he just decided to grab it for himself. The second he touched it, because he was in a handcrafted human weapon... The Darken still has the ability to twist the mind of the wielder. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference between why Sivir is not corrupted because hers was celestial made versus why mm -hmm, everything Mm. that is human made has the ability to still corrupt the wielder. 
So mm-hmm. essentially, because of his shadow technique, he was able to fight off the corruption, which means they basically get to coexist in his body. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So oh. now, again, uh, he was the second Darken. And they caught wind of this third Darken weapon being out there because I don't think that they were immediately aware of Varys, which is a whole yeah. other story. Mm-hmm. So they went after it. Kane slaughtered all of the Wuju Order, except for June and Yi, and then got locked into a fight with Yi. June had tears streaming down her face. She was so nervous. She said, there's nothing I can do. I feel helpless. But there was something that she could do. Because she had whispers in her ear from the blade in the temple. And Mm. those whispers sounded mighty convincing to her. You'll never die. You can save them all. You'll have all the power in the world. And so what does she do? She takes her hand now and she grabs those blood letters. And the second she does, she is immediately taken over and becomes the vessel for Zolani. Now. Zolani is a badass bitch. Uh, As I mentioned before, she was depicted way back when. Um, She is part, she was like the leading part of the Darken expansion that I mentioned for Legends of Runeterra. Yeah. Uh, And essentially, this is why. She was a healer. And the way that she healed was essentially using blood magic. So, when she found out that her blood magic could allow her to control people, she Mm. offered this blood magic to all of her brethren, all of the Darken, and she essentially gave them this in high quantities to secure her control. In theory, she wanted to control them so she could stop them from fighting one another, However, that is just a theory. It Mm. is not written in stone. That's not confirmed anywhere. But with her essential controlling of everybody, she was able to essentially start forming like an army for herself. It did not work out because, you know, Naisha came down and sealed half of her little army away and then the other half were sealed into these weapons including herself um but she she was seen as the actual like that bitch you know she had the full control because of this everybody hated her uh and so the person or i guess the darken to smash her face on that giant depiction of her in the stone was actually Aatrox. Aatrox, out of everybody, probably has the most hate for her. Understandably so. Oh they think that she's a coward, that she's conniving, you know, kind of Just makes sense. Just using them. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but she is, in her entirety, she is, like, such a badass. Because she's, like... And when I think about her being a champ, like, bro, you got self-sustainment. You got, like controlling other darken so that could be wrapped into something like honestly it's kind of giving vladimir and camille to me right right and i just imagine range yeah i imagine that that she would have range and that she would have like her w would probably be some sort of sustain maybe like heals from you know maybe she has like a amount of blood magic like um olaf where, yeah, like, yeah. She gets increased attack speed and like greater sustain. Yeah, something like that. Or like, mm-hmm. I just imagine she has like uh, attack speed because she's got like the dual wielding, you know? Yeah. For for the two blood letters, but she I imagine has to have a gap closer. Yeah, exactly. Like Silas, I, I think so too. So I feel like That's she so would cool. probably have like some sort of like gap closer, some sort of like maybe her healing is like siphoning. I don't know, but mm-hmm. I just. I think there's so much potential there. I want to see her as a champ. Like, reading Mm -hmm. through all of this stuff, I was like, her backstory is awesome. It would be cool if she had kind of like, not like a Zaya Rakan buff, but maybe like a Darken buff. Like, if there's a Darken on her team, she's got like some Mm -hmm. sort of like tiny little buff or maybe she can heal, but she can only heal other Darken. Um, I feel like that would have to be something passive since there's not that many Darken, though. 
True. Yeah. Or they would have to start putting in more Darkin, which honestly I'd be down for. Honestly, I'd be for it. Yeah. But I could I see her I could see her doing really well, like maybe either mid or top lane, depending on how they I mean, honestly, mm-hmm. she could probably be a jungler too, but I feel like we've got our dark and junk. Well, I guess she was supposed to be a jungler, but Nefiri is kind of a laner now. A huh? laner, yeah. yeah. So maybe I'd maybe... really like to see her as a top laner. That would be cool. Like getting I think a new top would laner sick. would be so. Could you imagine sick. like a Zolani versus Aatrox lane? Oh, that'd, be so, that'd be so sick. Imagine the You'd voice have lines. You'd anti heal so fast. Oh my god. The and, voice um, lines. Oh my god. The voice so lines would be sick. actually so sick. I would be so into that. I um, wouldn't be focusing on the game. Literally. So Riot, hear <laughs> us now. Make Zolani a champ. Full blown champ. Um, like she sounds so cool. And imagine the skin lines you could do. Yeah. For Especially real. during high noon season right now. Oh my yes. God, oh my God. Um, but yes, yeah. So that's that's Solani's part in it all. So basically, back when that whole Darken War started, it was all everything goes right back to Zolani basically saying, "You guys are already going crazy. Let me just one up it, give you blood magic, and y'all can go full blown crazy." That's essentially like the start of all of the downfall of of the Darken and the big hmm. Darken War. Uh, so because of that, she is credited for essentially getting them all sealed away. Without her blood magic, they wouldn't have been as strong. They wouldn't have gone across Runeterra spreading havoc. And so they all blame her for it. Rightfully so. Even if her intentions were to make them all stop fighting, she failed. And she didn't own up to her mistake or try to stop it. She ran. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, she was sealed away in those sickles. And essentially took over June's body when she tried to pick them up as a last ditch effort to save her uh, master. So uh, the reason that I say that Kane and Ross are kind of stupid was I looked Mm -hmm. more into it with this whole thing of like, I was like, well, what would have happened if one of them had gotten it? Like, honestly, what is this? And part of my reasoning was because one of the, the notes on the, Legends of Runeterra stuff is that everything in this is canon except for Kane. And I was like, okay, why? Yeah. The reason that Kane as a champion is never a hundred percent canon is because technically only one of them could win. So when you have anything where Rost wins or anything where Kane wins with his Shadow Assassin stuff, the other one is completely gone. Because they're Mm -hmm. constantly at battle with each other, which means unless Riot were to ever decide, okay, now we're just going to turn this into Shadow Kane, or now we're just going to turn this into Rost, none of his outcomes can ever be canon. Because they're all dependent on whether or not he goes Kane or he goes Rost. Which is dumb. It is dumb. I feel like they should be able to, like, figure out a way to have both Shadow Kane and Rost involved. At this point, I would love for Zolani... To give the blood magic to Cain, not to Ross, but to Cain, to kind of give him the ability to evenly match Ross. Because the whole thing is that Ross is stronger than Cain, right? But Cain's shadow assassin form allows him to fight back. So he's constant. Ross is constantly just taking over. And Cain is the one who's struggling because he's constantly fighting back. So. He's just putting up a fight, and truthfully, it kind of seems like it's just inevitable until Ross does take over, because at some point, Kane's probably going to be tired of fighting. So it's kind of yeah. dumb. Just find a way for them to coexist, and then call it a day. Mm-hmm. I just don't... I don't like it. Mm-mm, that's not my like favorite. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's that's basically why I, I dislike the story between, um, between Kane and Ross. Kane and Ross. And then uh, that basically sums up, like, where the Legends of Runeterra led up to. Because, like I said, everything after that is dependent on whether you choose Kane or you choose Rost. So the rest of it technically is not canon. There's a whole thing of if you choose, I think, whichever one you choose, I think, defeats Zolani in the lore. Mm. But mm. that part technically isn't canon. So, um, yeah. Good luck, I guess. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> I guess that's essentially it. Um, <laughs> moving on. So, uh, Aatrox, essentially, uh, you hit the nail on the head. They never really gave any more explanation to, like, 
who he is as a Darkin, because mm-hmm. technically he is an amalgamation of a whole bunch of different hosts that he has had. The two things that they did expand upon was the essentially like the two pieces of lore um, in terms of the wars that he started. So one of them was a very, very long time ago, and it was essentially the war between the, I think they're called the Protectants and the Mage Lords. Mm -hmm. And essentially, it looked very much like the Mage Lords were going to win. So Cain went, I'm not Cain. um, So Aatrox went to the other side, and he basically gave them this little like pep talk to tell them like, yo, Y'all need to fight back. There needs to be more bloodshed. You can win this. You can do this. Da, 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 da. And it caused fight. So there was a whole bunch of bloodshed. He, any time that his blade slices somebody, it consumes the blood of that enemy. So that's part of the reason why he's such an amalgamation of all these different hosts. Because if he kills someone and he's got their blood... I think it, like, mm-hmm. fuses with everything else, and it's basically just another, like, piece of a vessel Layer. for him. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. It's very strange the way that it works, but that's essentially what I could collect from it. The second one actually involves Trindamir, which might be why he's in the Freljord, uh, because yeah. while I didn't get that piece of information from the lore, mm-hmm. there was a very big war of barbarians, and mm-hmm. he essentially empowered Trindamir to Mm -hmm. just slaughter a whole bunch of people and with that uh, I believe that is why Trindamir has the power he has they didn't explicitly state it but I think his empowerment and his like berserk mode that he has Mm -hmm. heavily influenced by Aatrox and so uh, with that ability it's believed that he was able to come back after the war ended and basically like revel in the bloodshed Mm -hmm. because that is, he is the darken of war. So his one thing that he wants to do is create massive bloodshed so that he can benefit from it. Um, His lore states that he moves with his blade almost as if they're one, but that's not true for somebody like Cain and Rost which is just supposed to go to show you how intensely strong Aatrox is as a Darken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So So interesting. Yeah. And then he basically, his whole thing is that he just continues on looking for more bloodshed. That's like, that's all he truthfully wants. And he goes about it in a very aggressive way. So you know what? I'll let him. A hundred percent. He is like I'm not gonna stand in his way. Are you kidding me? He's a right. fucking giant ass demon who's g- looking off for bloodshed just cause, just cause he wants to. So I'm just not gonna say no. Uh, yeah, and, and yeah, just let him be. Honestly, yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, Kaylin Morgana got that. We don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you saw the video. Um, let yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So moving on. Before I get into the next two, because they're my favorites uh i'm gonna go ahead and give you just like a little bit of background on the other three that were kind of put out there so um naga neka which is Mm -hmm. the ballista darken uh was discovered under noxus and when they were discovered uh it was seen that she was like a living vessel She's a ballista and and she's alive as a weapon and I think that she's sealed still but I don't think that she has like a straight up vessel like it doesn't there was nothing that was said about it at least so I'm not entirely sure mm-hmm. but when I look it up it basically says that the vessel is a Noxian beast so I almost wonder if maybe well under Noxus if something stumbled across the ballista, the ballista and came into contact with it and so the vessel is actually just some sort of like undetermined Noxian creature honestly if it was at Mordkaiser's thingamabob his tower I wouldn't be surprised if a like very powerful beast that was locked in there somewhere had gone mm-hmm. out and came across that weapon and like right. had the ability to wield the darken inside 
right or vice versa i suppose i would not be surprised yeah true um yeah and then so uh the other ones are there's one named anaka which Mm -hmm. is a spear that was kept in the eastern Freljord, and a disciple of winter's claw which is sejuani's tribe uh Mm -hmm. was scouting and came across the spear picking it up and essentially being corrupted so uh the next one is ball cucks um and that is the staff darken who had the staff kept in um bandlewood and it's actually a bandal tree so because oh. bandal city is it bandal mm-hmm. city bandal city yeah yeah so um because bandal city has magic coursing through all of it essentially what happened was uh they like put the staff within a bandlewood tree and because the tree is technically a living vessel capable of being corrupted yeah it corrupted the tree and so it essentially Mm. became you know a a living tree corrupted by the darken i could just picture like a a treant from like lord of the rings yeah that's what i something living and just got bigger than life and instead of being like a more peaceful creature it would be more on the aggressive side because yeah. of the um corruption yeah i i could see that too i think it honestly it was interesting reading through these and like seeing all of the different because like obviously we know that nefiri is a pack of hounds but yeah. also seeing the other possibilities like an unnamed like an unnamed beast or like you know a regular scout from yeah <laughs> a, like a tribe or a, a tree like all of these things that can be corrupted by the darken and that turn in to mm-hmm. these these creatures it's just it's so interesting because now where we originally had five we now have i think 12 or 13 known darken mm-hmm. and all like it's there's just there's so many avenues in which we because i would have thought weapon needs to be picked up or needs to be wielded a tree can't wield a weapon yeah so like what what is that i feel like it's just (laughs) like the life's force mixing with the soul trapped inside i feel like that would have Mm -hmm. to be the bare minimum requirement yeah because um and and it's like the next one i thought about something which i will i will mention in just a moment because i actually think chalky's about to pop in with us something as well just while we're waiting um wouldn't it be really fucked up and kind of insane if one of these weapons somehow made it down the past line of vessels made it to build water uh what if it made it to the biggest black market you've got but on top of that there's like the most famous headhunters thugs and anything there but also if we're talking about life forces and stuff what if one somehow falls off of a shri- a ship like a merchant ship and reaches one of the realm of monsters in there oh imagine how imagine like a darkened sea monster mhm that would be so crazy that's what i was thinking that'd be so fucking sick oh my god wait actually mhm <laughs> that's what i was just thinking right now like that'd be so cool really fucked up in a way but very cool get chalky in here hi chalky hi chalky hello hello you (laughs) you you've joined us in the middle of talking about all the different darken yeah so excited (laughs) um so the ones i've gone over so far is we know that um atrox is the sword uh there's one named anaka who is a spear in the freljord and then one named falcux who's a staff in bandle city um whoa <laughs> yeah a whoa. tree <laughs> took over a tree um so the next one that i have is um hurazi which is the lodestone darken uh the it's essentially just an orb that was kept in mount targon and actually a targonian protector golem so not even like a oh that's so person sick. It's, yeah, just a golem actually picked up the orb. And so now it's a golem-like orb creature. 
Harazi is actually beautiful. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, this one is is one that resides in Mount Targon. Um, next is Ibaros, who is a harpoon. Uh, and it's funny that you, you mentioned the sea monster because this one was kept in the Serpent Isles. And the Ooh. vessel is actually kind of unknown but is possibly a trilobite-like sea monster or a Vestaya. We just aren't sure because Vestaya are so wide-ranged. Like, there's so many yeah. different forms that Vestaya take that it is possible it could either be one of those or it could be, um, like, an actual sea monster. Uh, for, and I don't know much about the Serpent Isles, if we're being honest. So mm -hmm. I can't actually tell you the possible things that existed there. <laughs> but I think that's kind of, I, I do think that's cool. I still think it would be cool if it was like a Kraken, like Darken or something in Bilgewater. Yeah. But the, I the... think like the take on like the world snake or like mm -hmm. a sea serpent, like that's larger than life would be so fucking sick. True. Oh, I also, like really imagine cool. it was like double daggers, but the daggers yeah. ended up being the serpent's teeth. Yeah. And it, it's just so like cool. it's it's one of these things like the idea that you that anything can pick up this weapon and be corrupted mm -hmm. by this like blood magic darken force or whatever it opens mm -hmm. the, like what if a freaking mouse like licks a weapon we have a darken <laughs> mouse now it'd be master splinter <laughs> that's it's, all I'm saying it's I like... want to be a darken mouse I feel like that would be, be lit <laughs> don't at me I'm gonna turn into a mouse and then find a darken weapon um <laughs> uh so the next one is a darken aegis or a shield uh named mm -hmm. Jeral. uh this gerald, sh gerald. um this <laughs> shield was guarded by house fortis and demacia and Ooh. house fortis was the lord and lady and then they had a son the son actually came across the shield picked it up and then was consumed by the corruption so, like a baby? Um, I think he was an adolescent. I'm not mm. sure if he was in his teens or preteens or whatever. Yeah. But from the way it sounded, it was just that he had stumbled upon the things that his family kept. Like he had like, you know, been a sneaky kid and like went in to like go find it. And unfortunately he just picked up the wrong item and should have listened yeah. to mom and dad when they said yeah. don't touch anything. That's so um, fucked. But yeah, so the son of House Fortis from Demacia is now unfortunately a darkened vessel. Uh, next up Crazy. is Nefiri. She was a dagger kept in the Temple of Sharima. And we already know that she was um, she was given a pack of dune hounds, essentially, as a vessel, which I will explain how that happened. It is actually very, very cool. So right after we go <laughs> through all these, I'll get to them. Uh, Naganeka, which is the the list of one. Um, Eastern Steps of Noxus underneath is the Noxus Beast. Pra, which is a fan darken, was kept in the oh. spirit realm and was essentially uh, picked up by a dragonling. So Pra is actually this like really crazy looking dragon. Um, super, super sick. Uh, so like, why can't we have these cool darkens? Like, what is Riot going to tell me why they haven't done this? And also, like, Riot, when you make your MMO, am I going to get to go to, like, Darken fights? Like, am I, can yeah. I fight the freaking dragon Darken? That sounds sick. Give me. Riot, like, please, I'm just saying. I want. I, I think that that would be really cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Darken, or like, or like, um, a Darken, yeah, like a Darken temporary champ set or something, even if they don't release it as, like, full yeah, champs. Yeah, like... that would be so fun. It just, like, or honestly, if we're being completely me? honest, can you just make darkened skins? True. Can you just, yeah. at the very least, make us darkened skins? Like, mm -hmm. corrupted Velkaz or corrupted Udir or something? I feel like it would. I would only like them if it was champs that have weapons, though. For sure. Like, I would love to see something like corrupted. Um, is cor No, ruined is a thing. But yeah, do mm -hmm. like the ruined skins. Do like the corruption and have like different champs maybe related to like Sharima. Because it would be cool if, if the Sharima champs got a skin line that was based off of what if they were in the Darken War and they got corrupted. 
That'd be so sick. Right? Like, like imagine. Like a, a darkened Nazis right? or darkened Renekton. It would be so cool. That would be so fucking sick. I really, I think that's a golden idea and Riot should pay us and take it. Oh my god, literally Riot hire us. Literally. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Let's clip in at we, Riot. Just we, <laughs> we basically create a champ for you. Literally hire us. Um, literally. <laughs> So after Pra, you have Rost. Rost is the scythe. We already know this. He was in Noxus. And then Kane, you know, decided to be selfish. And now they are locked in an infinite fight. Um, the next one, I know nothing about. Could not find a single piece of information. All I know is that their name is Storatu. They're a harp. They were in the caverns of Zaun. And they were picked up by a miner. Don't know huh. how the miners stumbled across it, if it was during mining or whatever. I just know that they stumbled across a harp, picked it up, became a dark kid. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the next one is another dragon, uh, Tarash, who is the halberd darken. For Ooh. those of you who don't know what a halberd is, it's like the thing that Hecarim has. It's like a spear... But it's like, it's like a, a really big pike. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. with a different pike head. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's I like know. a weird cross. Hecarim's the worst. I hate. I hate Hecarim. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why? What happened? <laughs> I've been I've been abused by a Hecarim lately, and um, <laughs> like every time I get into a league game, there's always a Hecarim, and I just keep getting charged. Oh. And I keep getting I keep getting dead. Like, Make him your perma ban, bro. Oh my god, but there's too many. There's too many bad champions I need to promote. Dude, that's the pain. League of Legends has no business having 160 champs and 90 of them are bannable. I know, it's True. like, you've like, given me trauma, you've given me trauma, you get. <laughs> I literally, I am so stuck permaban Swain, it's ridiculous. Okay, I just truth. picked honestly, the worst valid. of the evils, honestly. Yeah, it depends on which lane I'm in. Like, mid lane, I go strictly based off who i'm playing but like if i am bot lane and swain is free or if i just like ha like don't want to deal with a swain today permaban i <laughs> i cannot stand that motherfucker <laughs> yeah, but also misfortune can be so annoying oh like, yeah i play mf so that that is totally fair but also very annoying <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's uh, yeah i would say not not a lot of people like my mf <laughs> mm-hmm but I, I, I got mean... both my pentacles on her, so I'm with her for life, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, we popped off a little bit, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, the Halberd Darken Tarash, he resides, well, his weapon resided in the Blessed Isles, which eventually turned to the Shadow Isles. Mm -hmm. When they did turn to the Shadow Isles, a dragon who was ruined by the Shadow Isles then became corrupted when it picked up the halberd. So you have the black mist and the darken corruption all in one. And technically and, line. and technically because the darken were corrupted by the void first, you have the void, the darken and the black mist all in this dragon, which That's just so about cool. makes that the coolest freaking darken in existence. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so the cool. next two we both know we have Zolani with the blood letters. Um, was in uh, Bari Ionia, like you said, and what like we heard earlier was wielded and then eventually consumed June, the pupil of the Wuju order. Uh, the last Ooh. one is Varys. Um, this one again we know is a bow. And I'm going to jump right into his story because I think it's, like, totally sad, but also, like, kind of cute. Um, so, uh, Valmar and Kai, right? They were two Ionian hunters. And they were out one day and one of them uh, got extremely hurt. Um, and we're talking, like, on the brink of death hurt mm -hmm. so essentially what happened was they had heard of this like spring well uh pool kind of thing in ionia that could essentially like grant miracles and they decided that essentially what would happen is they were going to take uh 
Kai. Kai was the one who was mortally wounded. They're going to take Kai's body and um, follow these whispers that promised savior. They they were going to put him in this well, essentially. And this well was in Palace. And what happened was Valmar was so grief stricken when he heard these whispers that he essentially was persuaded to carry Kai into the well. Mm -hmm. Um, They were in love and he didn't want to go without him. So he carried Kai's body into the well with him, hoping that this forbidden magic that was whispering to him could essentially bring him back to life. When they jumped into the well, they essentially both swam down and allowed Varys to break down and remake their bodies into essentially one brand new body mm-hmm. and combining their flesh and souls together. So Ooh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And with that, essentially, Varys, which is the Darken, created a new body to be his vessel. And so okay. it was this combination of Valmar and Kai's bodies and souls that was essentially reborn to be corrupted but essentially when he climbed out of the well he realized that he could still hear the two conscious personalities of the two men inside him so they essentially all inhabit the body um and yeah they just like they live on to is it like um even between all three or is it like consciously yes but Varys is fully in control of the body oh so it's like all three of them share the mind but Mm -hmm. Varys controls the body and essentially they like they constantly struggle for control of the mind right because if you control the mind you control the body but yeah um Varys essentially has like the overwhelming control So even though all three of them can consciously speak to one another, Varys has the most, like, actual control over the body itself and the mind, which means he basically gets to to go on trying to, you know, avenge himself and his brethren and whatever, like, take out his anger on the rest of Runeterra while listening to two gay men bicker with him about how cruel he is for like using them to get a a new vessel like he's just in eternal hell listening to two gay men argue with him <laughs> that's amazing um, yeah but i think like the like the original s- story is just like so romantic to me of like them like valmar being so afraid of losing kai by putting him into this well for restoration or whatever you want to call it that he was like, I'm going to take this plunge with you because if you die, we're dying together. Like, that is so romantic. <laughs> it's such a... It's so sad, but it's so cute. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. And then um, the other favorite story I have is Nefiri's story because mm-hmm. it actually, like, uh, it ties in with Varys because... Um, he was looking for Nefiri and trying to like essentially um, find her weapon and there were excavators or like grave robbers who were essentially like trying to go through the ruins where her dagger was being kept and um, he killed most of them but Valmar and Kai actually were able to convince him to spare like the rest of them um and essentially he while he was sparing them and like having this fight with them he realized that nefarious dagger was gone so what had essentially happened was one of the um excavators i believe had grabbed nefarious dagger and at some point in the desert, lost it. 
So she was just... <laughs> just lost. She it. was just lost in the desert for like a oh really, really God. long time. And her lore basically states that she was like forever wasting away, just sitting as a dagger in the uh, in the desert. And she would constantly hear the howls of the dune hounds, which are they inhabit the area around Shrima, and they're like very feared because their howl is like very prominent as a sound of a starving predator. So basically what happened was she was out there for god knows how long like mm. just chilling and then a somebody who knew of her power carefully picked up her dagger and this whole time she's like this is my chance i'm gonna have a vessel i will be free i can go about my life again as a darken it like this is my chance but this man knew what he was doing so he had this like thick cloth that he like wrapped around it making sure not to touch her and she was mm -hmm. fucking pissed so then mm -hmm. <laughs> in the distance she heard dune hounds howling and she was like okay here's my plan i'm gonna call the dune hounds and while he's trying to fend them off he's gonna mm. mess up and he's gonna end up touching this dagger and he will be my vessel so that's exactly what no, she did. She's like, I win. Yeah, she's like, you know? there's no possible way in which I lose this. And I'm going to say this right now. Darken, kind of dumb. They're kind of oh. big dummies. Because <laughs> her assumption was, if I call these hounds, surely nothing bad can go wrong. I will get a, this man to be my vessel. There's no way in which this can go bad. Mm -hmm. What she didn't <laughs> account for is that he would not have her dagger on him when he was eaten alive by dune hounds, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that's exactly what I was about to say, happened. they'd be eaten. Right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, they, they'd be chomping on me. him. They'd be chomping on the horse. And guess what? They'd be chomping on the dagger. Uh, so the okay. dune hounds... Apology. The dune hounds ate every last piece of the man, his horse, and Nefiri's dagger. The next thing that she realized, or the next thing that she like senses is that she has like her power is spreading out and she's like, motherfucker, I'm in this pack of dogs now. And at <laughs> first she was kind of like, I don't think I fuck with this. Like, I'm a dog, dude. What am I Multiple supposed to do? Dogs. Yeah. And she was like, what am I supposed to do? Because these things are feared, but they're not that strong. There, this is not like a body that I can alter and and do well with. But then as time passed, she kind of realized that even though dune hounds in and of themselves are kind of weak beings, as a pack, they are top dogs. They are strong. Oh, for sure. And they can do anything. Yeah. So she kind of learned how to use the individual pieces of the pack to form them together and create kind of like a one woman army, so to speak. Hmm. Uh, because she was able to essentially share collective thoughts across the whole pack, right? So now yeah. she's like, I have not been granted one vessel. I've been granted a dozen. And from there on, she kind of just kind of, she learned to adapt, learned to adjust. And now she's a badass bee with the whole pack behind her. All oh, cool herself, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I really, honestly, Varys and the Fury, I think, are two of my favorite Darken Champ stories. I really like Kane's just because of how extensive it is. But, like, as far as how, like, in depth and cool they are, I love Varys and I love Nefiri. Mm -hmm. Don't play Nefiri, but, like, her story is cool. It's dope. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, for sure. Those are basically the summaries of. All of the dark darken that we know of that have survived, um, and I believe they're done with darken lore, so to yeah. speak. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of hoping that at some point we get like a continuation of where everybody is at, or like where everybody is is trying to end up. Yeah. I also wouldn't mind if they, like, went back and delve a little deeper within, um, 
like more backstory of the Darkin we have. Yeah. Or like also, for example, if they release a new Darkin, um, have that backstory tie into a possible backstory of another Darkin to like thicken it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, agree. That'd be cool. Um, also the the Darkin have very fun like voice lines together, right? Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite things that's reoccurring is Atrox has a voice line where <laughs> he's talking to Varus and he goes, Varus, V-A-R-U-S. There's supposed to be an A and then another A. There was a memo, Varus. There was a memo. And it kills me fucking <laughs> because it's it's repeated so many times because Varus has one where he claps back and he's like, um, I think it's Rost who's, who he claps back at maybe. And he goes, the double A thing is ridiculous and you know it. And I think it's so funny that there's like <laughs> this like emphasis put on having two A's in your name as a darkhead. It's so funny to me. It's like in the void where it's like everybody has an apostrophe except yeah. for Malazar and uh, the other one is Cassidin and you know it's like almost everybody has an apostrophe in their name so it's like you know. yeah I, it's funny how like i mean i get it to a certain extent because like regional difference like of course there's going to be some places that have this like thing but a double a is just such an interesting thing and it's true every other darken aside from varus and harazi have double a's and they all have a's in their name mm -hmm. what's the story beside it there's a memo, like, like, why Chalky. Don't they, why don't they there was a memo. I mean, I, I, I know that there's a memo, <laughs> but I'm saying, why didn't they follow the memo? Hello? Yeah. I, just, they just didn't get it. I think Varys is, a, is a rebel. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think Varys is a little bit of a rebel, and he just, you know, he just didn't want to I do think it. that since there's three of them, they couldn't decide, so they left it. Yeah. I Yeah, maybe they had, like, an internal fight. They were like, no. Like, maybe Kai and Thalmar were like, Spelling Varys with two A's is fucking stupid. We're doing one. Yeah, what if they didn't like that? Yeah, and then they were probably yeah, yeah. hounding him. It was two against one, and they were like, you know what? Majority rules, bitch. Ooh. And so Varys only has one. Now, Harazi, I can't I can't make any excuses for her, but yeah. I bet she has her reasons. Yeah, true. Yeah. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's Darkened. So I think, Cap, you have some fun facts, right? I do. I had some stuff in regards to Maisha as well, um, but we went over that and that she was the predecessor, predecessor before Zoe, and that kind of, like, passed on the knowledge of, like, being able to seal the dark in a way, so that was really big. Um, you went completely through all of, like, June and Master Yi and Jelani, mm -hmm. um, so that was really cool. Um, I have that both Nazis and Renekton actually fought alongside the ascended that later became the darken so i feel like that'd be oh. really cool to dive in with that the darken that we know of today um or some of them at least um that nazis and renekton would know of them and i feel like that'd be really interesting to see if they have any like voice lines or like yeah. recognition kind of things i bet they something do something like so and so um, I recognize you, but you seem lost. Or, like, something like that would be so yeah, cool. Yeah, that would be really sick. I think the voice lines between characters is something that I've become, like, increasingly interested in. Because, mm -hmm. like, there are some champs who have a voice line with, like, everybody. Like, uh, Fiddlesticks or Kindred are really good examples. They have, like, a voice line for everyone. And some of them are so, cri like, cryptic. Because, yeah. like, fi I know Fiddle says to Jinx, like, he just keeps repeating, like, your fault, your fault, your fault. And so it's just, it, mm. like, it's so interesting to me and how they're all connected. And I think it would be really cool to see if, like, Nasus or Renekton have any, like, voice lines if they're facing Aatrox. Mm -hmm. And there's the same mm. thing. Well, that would be, I feel like, if they were playing with them. Because oh, yeah. if they fought with them, one that I would be 100% true against would be Pantheon. Apparently, Pantheon was against the Darken during the Great Darken War. <gasps> oh, I honestly, that makes sense. It like, does make sense, but cause... I just don't, I don't think I can right now recall a line that Pantheon says to a Darken that I could just recall on the spot. I don't think he does. Yeah, but that would be cool. Hmm. That would be cool. And then another one I have was the Trindamir thing, him being the sole survivor of the Aatrox massacre in the Freljords. So that was really interesting. And I also had the idea of, like, 
Trindermere's ulti kind of seems like what's going on between Rost and Kane, but only at like intermittent times. Oh. So like Trindermere only has that like fight with what's going on inside when he's slash ulted. Well, easily depicted um mm -hmm. like that because they later said that Trindamir's like going through that like all the time um but he only can see through it at certain times because he said he's always battling kindred yeah i believe yeah so like mm. i think that'd be like a really interesting take on like Trindamir and kindred kind of having that back and forth kind of thing the yeah. same like kane and ross do yeah that yeah. would be interesting and then I have my last one being, um, so it seems that Vladimir learned the blood magic from a Darken. They didn't specify who, but that is who he later um, would slay. So he kills this Darken who he got all this knowledge from and gained his near immortality from, which then he creates this Crimson Circle, which is a cult of Hemomancers. And he then taught all of the people who would join this cult um his learnt blood magic from this darken and he just spread all this evil like darken magic around after mm -hmm. he learned everything he could and said yeah i'm gonna take that and just killed him and just was able to i would think because it was a darken they didn't say it was a vessel but i'm unsure when this timeline of when vlad was around would mm -hmm. be but if it was a true Darken, I would have to think that he didn't necessarily, like, kill him, kill him on the spot. I think he did a kind of fucked up way of keeping the Darken alive, but draining of, of him of his blood slowly. And then infusing that with his own to gain that near immortality. Because he can't fully become immortal, because I feel like he would have to be an ascended Darken himself. Mm -hmm. But I think he can get just close enough if he wielded that magic that he learned from this Darken along with the Darken's blood itself. I feel like that'd have, like, a really high magic volume and, like, be able to do that for himself. Yeah. Which is why he's a strong Hemomancer. Yeah. Oh, that would that'd be, be so, so freaking cool. interesting. To, like, yeah. know more about it. I don't know anything about Vlad's backstory either. I actually don't either. Mm-hmm. Interesting. It would. I'm See, these fun facts, they're just... Mm. Yeah. Good. That's crazy. I was under the impression that Mordekaiser was darkened, which is like No, he's which he's obviously is not true. But... He's uh twice slain, thrice born. He was his whole story is crazy because he's like mm -hmm. he's been around for forever and the big thing about it is that he was killed, said that he would make his return, his followers resurrected him, and then mm. he was killed again. And then the black mist brought him back to life because it brought everything back to life as like a ruined form when it inhabited the Blessed Isles and turned them into the Shadow Isles. So mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. been resurrected twice because of he's just like he refuses to die. And he's not dark in, but he's a pretty good like runner up to like pure evils. <laughs> also, he's yeah, hot. like it's close. Yeah. Well, um, okay. <laughs> uh also okay. my one of my one of my last notes is i have to go over some of my favorite um atrox voice lines of because course, course. his voice lines with other darken are so freaking funny when he <laughs> sees kane if kane is ross he does this thing where he goes i chose a sword the noblest weapon ross you seriously i don't understand were you trapped in a gardening section and i think it's so <laughs> Oh, and he, he goes my he goes a scythe a scythe are you planning on murdering fields or what and it's so good that is insane. It's so dumb fuck? um he does have one with nasus um where he just says like is your wisdom enough to know your fate because i'm going to be your death or something like that so cool. he doesn't have anything crazy like that for him and like renekton he says like uh in your madness, you know my suffering, uh, but I'll end yours. So I think that's like a nod to maybe the void, like disturbance. Yeah. But he doesn't really have anything like too crazy. Then he has the one with Varys with the um with the double A thing, which I still think is so fucking funny. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, And he like he's he's just like so ridiculous in the way he says things to people. Yeah. Um, I had no idea he had a personality like he's so taunting. I had no idea Uh, because I don't I don't play him. But like with Pantheon, like he he taunts him a lot because he's always like, come on, Pantheon, you know, come tell me. Tell me of your friendship. Let me hear you scream of your brotherhood. They're like, um, he'll say this thing of like, oh, how noble and proud you are. Like, come, fiend. Like, he's just yeah. like so taunty to him. And I think that's so, I just had no idea he had a personality. I thought he was just like <laughs> straight murder all the time. And then mm-hmm. um, Kane's got like, well, I guess Rost has some voice lines, which I also learned is interesting because usually Kane and Ross are kind of back and forth with their their voice lines but yeah. he, only he Ro- only Ross has like um like taunts and uh like first encounter lines with other yeah. Darken as as if to almost like shut Kane out completely because he doesn't want Kane to know like what actually happened I think Kane's in the dark a lot yeah so I think that, that makes sense. yeah um so I think that that's interesting too but uh he's got some interesting ones I wrote some of them down uh where like if he's teamed up with Aatrox he'll, he'll say like oh death and war this will be delicious and then um if he's with Varys, he'll say, if we find Aatrox, and it's a party of murder. A murder party. <laughs> a murder party. I've it's heard that like, one. That yeah, me too. One. I just, they're so dumb. Like, how are Dark and this stupid? It's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny. And, like, if you ever play Kane, you can hear when he goes back and forth, like him and Ross, mm-hmm. it, they're, like, he's a big dummy. And then Aatrox is also a big dumb. Varys is like the one who's like a little serious. And it actually makes me like him less. Because <laughs> oh. I kind of like that they're goofy. But Varys yeah. is so like down to earth and serious. It's kind of annoying. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's like he's like the big brother, but like, or he's like he's like yeah, he's like the big brother, but like, and he's just like everybody else is goofing off. He's yeah, like, oh. I'm he's sick like, of this. The kids are annoying. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, he's like it, he's over it. I mean, I guess yeah. he has two gay men bickering in his head all the time. So why would he also want to deal with his like darkened siblings? Oh yeah, yeah. You're like, and well, then, that's mean. Um, Nefiri taunts her fellow darken a lot. Like, I think she's got. One with Kane, where she's like, hmm, Ross, still struggling with your vessel, I see. How petty. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's very petty. Mm-hmm. Which I kind of like. Oh, yeah. For sure. Especially, you were stuck in the desert all the time. You know what? You deserve it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And pettiness. Also, I like how I like how the sneaky plan didn't work the way that they wanted. It was just kind of funny. Oh my god, <laughs> I know. She was I like, like I just that's love funny. that again, a big dummy. Because she's like, there's only one thing that's gonna happen is he's gonna touch like there's no possible outcome with these ravaging like dune hounds. Like nothing bad could so. happen. It's yeah. gonna go exactly the way I'm seeing it in my brain. Hey, hounds, come get him! Like, what did you? Mm-hmm. Act- what were you expecting? Mm-hmm. The dogs not to eat. Dog gotta eat, you know. <laughs> Dog gotta eat, bro. Well, that's about all I have for Darkin. That's about all I've got as well. Yeah. I didn't bring anything to the table, but <laughs> uh, I enjoyed listening. So. Excellent. <laughs> Oh, that's all. That's okay. Next time we'll have some. We we gotta we gotta brainstorm what we're gonna cover next time. I feel like there are so many big portions of. I every time we do one of these, I learn about like another aspect of league that I'm like, oh, God, I gotta know more about this now. Yeah, we just want to dive into everything all at once. And we just I know. Can't. We have to pick one. <laughs> Literally narrowing down which topic to talk about. Like with Darken, I was like, we gotta do it because I've been. I was. I was learning so much about Darken lore because I didn't realize that it was so extensive that I was like, I gotta talk about this, bro. Like, I I can't hold it in anymore. But now that this is over, there's like 85 topics that I would yeah. love to go into. Mm-hmm. 
But speaking about those topics, mm-hmm. I believe we have the topic for next week, don't we? We we do. We have it. We have it planned out. Um, so I was wondering, um, mm-hmm. how long have you been playing video games by chance? Um, you know, I'll get back to you. We'll circle back to that next week, and yeah, I'll yeah. have an answer. I have, I have an idea of like yeah. a game, you know, that I once played. Yeah. Like, back in the day. Hey. But I think we'll hold off. For yeah, that. you tell me yours. I'll I'll tell you mine next yeah, week though. Okay, Anyways. Week. <laughs> Remember, Cubbies, keep, keep it, it real, real, but keep, keep it curious. curious. Bye, Goodbye. Guys.